What is going on, CyberFam? All right, uh, we're gonna go over some of the things about Foundry for startups, and I'm just gonna get right to it and kind of explain the main things of like what I think and how it's beneficial, okay? I don't wanna keep this video too long and keep you here too long, so I'll keep chapters just to see, like just to get you the main point outside of the intro. Now, if you like this video, feel free to like, subscribe, uh, definitely comment. Uh, I'll leave my Twitter handle here. I recently created it. I'm not that active on it, but you know, feel free to reach out to me there as well. Okay, let's get into it. Now, the article that I'm reading is from Euronews.next. I'll post the link in the description. Now, the thing is, Palantir is doing a lot of work where they're leveraging, they're trying to leverage your platform to a lot of these like SPACs and startups and that kind of stuff, right? Um, and there's a lot of people drawing a lot of comparisons and, and just having a lot of issues with this. And there's a lot of people all of it. I'm gonna tell you like really what their, what I think the plan is for the most part and, and really like what the point of all this is, okay? Now, remember this is Foundry for startups, right? So I just did a recent thing on Foundry, like a technical analysis thing. So if you like that, feel free to give it a look. But the thing is, guys, straight up, like let's just get right to the point here. The point of Foundry is not, and, and I'm gonna work backwards in this article, but at the bottom they have this, area where they're talking about risks, right? They're like, oh, uh, Palantir was founded by uh, right-wing blah, 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 Alex Karp and all this. Like, who cares, guys, okay? Really, at the end of the day, like, you know, it, it's a company that's dealing with data. It's a company that's dealing with software. Politics has no place in this, okay? Really, it doesn't. Um, but at the end of the day, they bring up all these things about, like, how they secured a contract with NHS and was secretive. Let me just tell you something about what I think Palantir is taking is important here, okay? They don't care about your actual data, all right? And this is uh, this is big. Everyone's always like, data is gold, data is the new gold, data is blah, blah, blah. Listen, guys, they don't actually care about the data, you understand? Like, in, in Europe especially, uh, and this article uh, uh, focuses on, um, uh, what is this thing called? Station F, Station F in France, which is just like a bit massive like incubator. Um, and the thing is, the, the, the lady who was interviewed here, um, uh, Garby, I think her last name is, right? She was mentioning that like, it's totally open, right? Uh, basically the people that use this incubator can do whatever they have to. They own the IP to all that stuff. They just leverage Foundry. And even if they don't want the data out of Foundry, they can pull it out. Now, remember the point of all of this isn't the actual data, right? Because you gotta think about it this way, okay? The data itself could be bad or good. Right, I'm, I'm telling you this, I, I had my own startup that was data oriented and, and this would have really helped me. Um, but the thing is, at the end of the day, the data is not what matters. It's the inferences from the data. It's, it's the relationships you draw from it and how you draw those relationships that matter. It's almost like you're helping Foundry or Palantir typically try to train their own stuff. Like Google does this all the time, right? When you're searching stuff and when you're doing um, you know anything, even like uh, Google ads and all this other stuff, they don't actually care about your content, right? Like you can literally make the worst thing in the world and, and advertise for it and they'll, they'll still give you business. But at the end of the day, they care about what kind of associations you made with it, how successful it was. They'll leverage that into a product and they'll ship it out to you as an advertiser, for example. So the associations you make from the actual data entry points and how you draw those conclusions are what I think Palantir is after. And that's really like, you're not, you're not talking about the data itself at this point, right? You're talking about what people draw from it like that's crazy that's that's the kind of stuff when you when you can actually train for it um you know you can drastically increase this decision making right this is like a huge tool that's number one number two these startups are sort of like you can think of it as like the new age the new fabric of of the next society that that might come up the next set of technocrats if you will right so you're going right to the stem of all of these data entry points. You're not saying to like huge companies already have convoluted data sets. Now they do do that, right? Foundry is an enterprise product pretty much and by by every means. Um, but by going to startups, you're 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 hitting from the stem. So in a way you're you're tossing in this dependence where you're saying, well, you know, you can use our product for free or whatever the price is. Um, and no one else is doing it. So these guys will, from the beginning, get used to how Foundry works and all the inferences that are that are drawn from it. Um, and that's very, very contagious. I'll tell you that right now. Like once you start, I remember the first few things that I've ever used in my career, it's still to this day, I compare it to that, right? Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse, right? But it has that much of a lasting impact uh, in your professional career as well. So this is like, I think this is a, a career and a, and a sort of future play. And 
And, you know, not all of these startups are going to survive, of course, right? But the beauty of all this is the inferences that they draw from it or any sort of, uh, you know, results that they draw from it are the IP of the company, of the client. But the way it's done, the inner workings of how Palantir or, or Foundry helped that decision process, that's basically logged in Palantir's side, right? So they're like, yeah, we don't care what you have. Like, we don't care what you store with us. But, you know, we just want to see what you're doing, right? Which is, I think, a totally fair um exchange to be honest like if if i were to do a startup now i would have loved to have this opportunity so um you know that's what i think i mean honestly just to touch on a few other points in this article like i'll, I'll link in the description but there's a lot of stuff here guys it's like <laughs> some of it is just like a wish wash and it's to be honest a little bit unnerving because it, it, it's almost looking at this from like a uh like a different light rather than you should you should look at this from this article from a technology perspective right it's very opinionated a little bit but you know at the end of the day this is just one thread of many when it comes to foundry for startups so you know take that for what it is by no means is this the be all end all of any points that i'm making these are what i think are important immediate points that you can address and draw from this Foundry for startups type of thing. Okay. There are obviously lots of stuff. If you feel like discussing it, feel free to discuss it in the comments below. If you want me to touch on it in more detail, let me know. I can do that as well. But that's it for me. It's a real nice quick one. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace.